Hi guys, I'm John and you're watching Birds of Cebu, a channel dedicated to avian culture, avian behaviorism, and avian companionship. Now this is the second part of a six-part series on how to train a bird, and today we're going to cover on how to read a bird's body language. Now, there are several species of other birds out there that have their own specific body movement, and for that reason, we're not going to come up with a guide on that very specific aspect. However, at the end of this video, what you're going to learn is the key important areas to watch out for in a bird's body movement, at the same time trying to interpret these certain movements. So it's a very general guide that will hopefully help you in your overall training with a bird. So when trying to read a bird's body language, here are the key regions that you want to watch out for. The first area is the head, the second one is the tail, the third is the wings, and the fourth, the feet, and the fifth, overall the feathers of the bird so when reading the head the two key areas that you want to look at is the are the eyes and the beak the thing with the head is that it's not just what looking at the eyes and the beak but also the position of the head because it can give you an idea of what the bird is fixated on for example because parrots have eyes at the sides of their head when they want to focus on a particular object what they would do is they tilt their head to the side and try to focus on that object. So that's one way you can see what your bird is particularly noticing or focusing on. Now another thing that you have to notice with the eyes, especially with parrots, you have this thing called pinning. It's where the pupils are actually constricting and it looks like a pin on the eye. So this can indicate that the parrot is actually very excited or aggressive. And this is something that you need to be careful with. You shouldn't interpret it as something that's absolute. It all goes back to your experience with the bird. How you're going to see if which particular pinning refers to excitement or aggression. And the thing with the beak. Now, if you have a parrot that is backing up or all feathers out and the beak is semi-open, that is a sign that the parrot's most likely to bite. So with the beak, you want to be observant if it has the stance as if it's looking to bite or if it's just calm and relaxed. And if you have a parrot that has a crest like cockatoos or cockatiels, crests are actually a great way to find out how the bird is feeling. Excited birds or birds that are feeling fear fearful would have their crests raised up. With my macaw, with Iggy, what I do is I observe if he's particularly excited whenever I show him a treat, all his feathers on his head would start to raise up. So that's one way that I can read Iggy. Now let's talk about the tail. Well, with shorter tail feathers, I've noticed that there's this tendency to do tail flaring where they have their tails fanned out. And this is common in Amazons and I've also observed it in Eclectus parrots. And usually this is an over excitement sign or it could also be a sign of aggression. If you've got a bird flaring its tail and displaying it to you, you might want to back up a little bit. Now let's talk about the wings of a parrot. Especially with cockatoos and cockatiels, I've observed that if they get aggressive or defensive, they tend to raise their crests and open their wings. But it's not always an act of defense. It could actually be an, a positive emotion, something that they're excited about, especially when they start bobbing their head or bouncing around. These are signs that a bird is actually positively happy. Now, the thing with wings as well is that it's not just about opening them up. There are also signs where a parrot's about to bite when they're shaking their wings. And this, I think, could be associated with mating behavior. But in my experience with Eclectus parrots, uh, in, if they are likely to bite, they will tend to shake their wings a little bit. I've also observed this in Indian ringnecks. There's a slight shake of the wings that's not opened up, like a sh sort of a shiver before they bite. So this is also something that you need to observe with generally most hookbills or parrot species, you have to be careful when there's wing shaking. But it's not absolute, again, once again, it's not absolute that if there's this certain motion, it relates to biting. But that's just something that you want to observe as a side of caution because it's common for hookbills or parrots to have the wing shaking prior to biting. Now let's talk about the feet. I wouldn't read the feet as a sense of um, emotional expression. Rather, I would look at the feet as what the parrot is thinking or thinking of doing at that moment. For example, with Iggy, since I have this habit of having him in my hand and I'm scratching him, whenever he wants to have that activity happening, he would look at me, 
make that kind of sound and he would raise his feet and scratch his own head and that for me is a cue that says hey Iggy wants to be scratched and I've observed this not just in Iggy but I've also observed this in umbrella cockatoos and cockatiels but the thing is you have to be careful just because a parrot looks like it's inviting to get scratched you do not always make it an idea that they want to be scratched you have to be careful because some birds especially parrots because they're all focused on getting attention maybe what they want is you to come over and scratch them and then they take a bite so if you're not sure with a parrot if it is if it, if it has a tendency to bite ask the owner don't approach a parrot immediately and assume that it's going to be okay because sometimes we misread these kinds of motions and now we're going to talk about the overall feathers of the bird so we have crested birds like cockatoos and cockatiels which give you an idea of their overall emotions but with birds that do not have crests you can look to their overall feathers in their body or in their especially in their head so when these feathers are raised it could be excitement it could be aggression or it could be stress so we want to watch out for that but it's not always absolute that these are negative emotions sometimes the race crest could be curiosity i noticed that when i start training and i bring in a, a new object and iggy is particularly curious he would raise all his feathers so something that you might want to watch out for now the thing with feathers as well is that it's not always just about emotion it can also be about their overall health birds that are always fluffed up which normally they are not, would be an indicator that your bird might be sick. So reading body languages is not just about understanding their emotion and their thought. It can also be a way to observe their health and watch out for symptoms that could indicate a sick bird, especially since birds are quite good in hiding their sickness. So one of the key things that I feel is important in trying to read bird body language is also identifying happy behavior. Why do you have to identify happy behavior? Because this is a great way to understand if you are doing good in your uh, training sessions because a, a bird that is content or happy after a training session is a bird that is also overall uh, having a good relationship with its trainer. So what you want to watch out for with happy behavior are these three things. I think that beak grinding is one of the things that I like to see in a young bird and although it can indicate sleepiness but I've noticed this that uh, birds that have gone to a very good um, amount of training and have a, a satisfactory day they would have beak grinding at the end of the day second thing that I like to watch out for is grooming or preening birds that are comfortable birds that are happy they tend to groom or they tend to preen I notice that birds that are newly uh, placed in the house or in my flock, they tend to be silent and they don't move at all. So birds that are grooming indicate a bird that's already comfortable with its environment or they don't feel stressed. And the third happy behavior that I also like to point out is talking. I notice that my talking birds like my Clectus parrots and my Indian ringneck parakeets, they tend to talk more when they're happy. But if it's a stressful situation, like I'm changing the position of their cages or their dogs passing by, they're really silent. So I'm not going to say that this is absolute, but I believe that talking birds refer to happy parrots. So if you got a bird that's happy, then you're likely to have a talking parrot. So if you want to talk to, if you want to teach a parrot to talk as well, make sure that you're providing them all their needs and wants so that they can have that happy disposition to allow them to talk. So a final reminder on how to read a bird's body language, you should not limit it only to training sessions. I highly encourage you to look into the bird's behavior and overall body language in socially important activities like playtime when they're just touching their toys or throwing around things or destroying stuff. Second is during bath time. I feel like during bath time there's a lot of expression going on, a lot of emotion, so it's a great way to observe them. Third is when they're interacting with other birds. That teaches you a lot about your personal the bird's personality and understanding how he works with other birds. So don't limit your observance to training time try to look for other aspects of your bird and it also helps to observe when they when you notice that 
your bird is not looking at you or you're not interfering with, with whatever he's doing, try to observe from afar. It gives you an idea of certain behaviors that he might express when you're not around. So learning all these things is building a better relationship with your bird so that you as an owner or a trainer can better understand their tendencies and therefore you're able to prepare yourself for certain conditions. So make sure that your time spent with your bird is not just for you to observe your bird and how he responds to you, but also to understand your bird's personality. And as a final reminder, when dealing with bird body language and interaction, I'd like this to be a safety guide that in case if you're not sure about a bird's particular movement or emotion, do not engage. Especially helpful when you're dealing with birds that are new to you or birds that do not belong to you. If you're unsure about that particular behavior, do not engage. Why? Because if you engage in a behavior that might not be good, then you might be encouraging the bird by giving it attention. So if you want to avoid certain behaviors that might lead to aggression or even just unwanted behaviors in general, do not engage with the birds. Parrots especially are attention-seeking birds. And if you give them attention, you are positively reinforcing that particular behavior. So I hope this guide was able to give you a better picture of how to read a bird's body language. And I know it's not a very specific guide, but it's something that I hope will stimulate you to try to look at the bird training aspect beyond just the training, but also in your daily interaction with the bird. And do remember that with every training session, it's always about interaction with the bird. So even outside training, any time that you're engaging with a bird is a training session. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the future videos of Birds of Cebu, especially for this six-part series. We're now done with two parts, and we're going to continue for four more parts, which I hope will help people get better relationships with their birds. See you again next time, and do like and subscribe our videos at Birds of Cebu, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok.